everybody. So um, I wanted to do a video and I actually did one earlier and I did it on my phone and um, it came over 15 minutes, like nine minutes over 15 minutes. So I felt like, okay, I need to um, do it on the computer because the computer, you know, handles it better um, when it's longer videos and maybe I can get it because it was just nine seconds over 15 minutes. Maybe I can get it under 15 minutes. Um, so what I thought I would do again, just like last week, I want to do a video this time um, on, I'm going to turn off this light because I think it has, yeah, that's better. Um, I want to do one on, um, <clears throat> um, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to get the, the thing just right. Okay, so I thought I would do it talking about, um, I'm, I'm going to be folding clothes as I'm doing this, but um, I thought I would talk about time, like like how long I breastfeed, how many times I should breastfeed, um, should I switch sides, back and forth, that kind of thing. So I thought that that would be a good topic for a mom prenatal and also a mom, you know, of course, after she's had a baby. And a mom, you know, if you've, if you're watching this and you've never had a baby, you might be thinking, you know, why would this be good as a prenatal class? But the reason it is, is because you are going to hear a lot of different viewpoints. You're going to hear people say that you need to make sure, and you're going to get this from everybody. Once they hear you're going to breastfeed or that you're thinking of breastfeeding, they're going to say, you know, they're going to give you all their little pointers. You know, make sure you let the baby stay in the nursery so mom can sleep. You know, uh, make sure you breastfeed on 15 minutes on each side. Um, will be some of the others. Um, you know, give the baby a pacifier. I mean, none of these things are wrong in themselves, but they're just opinions. And for instance, just the one, the one on breastfeeding, maybe 15 minutes on each side. You could get that. Um, or I'll say one that's even more... Um, common to get like 11 different views, viewpoints, is the um, how long should I wait between feedings? Like how often should my baby, my baby be eating? And pe some people will tell you, don't wake a baby. And other people will tell you, you have to wake the baby because, you know, the baby is um, little and they may sleep and not wake up when they need to feed and that kind of thing. So you're going to hear that viewpoint. Now, when I say 11 different viewpoints, you can even get that in the hospital. I have no moms that are like, I cannot wait to get out of the hospital because I cannot handle any more stress of like people telling me what I'm doing wrong or what I should do and not do. And, and so this, that's why I'm, I'm making it a prenatal class as well. Because if you know this ahead of time, you don't have to deal with the, you know, you can let people say what they want to say and think what they want to think and you do your own thing because you know this is um the the this is exactly what my you know lactation consultant says I should do this is what um the breastfeeding world is saying I should do and all the up to date knowledge just like laying a baby on their back on their side on their stomach has changed over time certain things about breastfeeding have changed over time and that has that can be so many different things and changing sides and um, waking a baby and how long they should feed on each side and and all that kind of stuff that's a lot of information that has changed because a lot has been learned about the breast it's not you know so much about babies all changing because you know it's pretty much the same um, but more knowledge about the breast um, they're learning how the breast works and um, the best way to, you know, ensure good milk supply and making sure the baby gets enough fat and all that kind of stuff. So that's a constant, um, a constant change. I mean, that's, that's just something that's going to happen. I mean, it's going to be changing over time because, you know, with technology where you're able to learn so much about the, you know, the breast that you couldn't before and technology is always, is only going to get better. I mean, um, and so we're going to learn even more. So that's kind of what I decided to talk about. It would be about, um, should I switch sides? 
um, how long in between feeds. Um, and what was the one? Oh, how long should they feed on the breast with what's considered a good feeding? So let's start with, um, let's start with changing sides. Let's just start with that one. That one's a pretty short, simple, you know, thing. With the breast, the reason we would say 15 minutes on this side, 15 minutes on that side was kind of leave. It was kind of for mom. So that mom was balanced, basically the breast, she didn't, the baby didn't empty like mom being lopsided. So it was kind of like an even thing. But we changed that because we realized that a baby, the, the fattier milk is in the back of the breast. Um, so if a baby is just feeding for a few minutes on each breast, they're not really getting that fattier milk like we want them to get it. Now things are changing even in that. Um, they're coming to understand that um, there is fat throughout the breast. It's not just at the back of the breast, um, but that's still like changing and, you know, nothing's really been, I don't think anything's really been changed statistically or like written. Um, so basically just remembering, think of it like, you know, skim milk, the baby's just getting that thin milk. So the longer they can breastfeed on one side, the better. They can get a full feeding on one breast. There are many women that only breastfeed on one side. Um, the baby just for some reason would never take the other side. Sometimes the nipple um, was inverted and the baby just couldn't latch correctly. So it ended up just never breastfeeding on that side and only fed the baby exclusively breastfed on one, one breast. So it can be done. They can get a full feeding, you know, through that. Now, um, the best thing we would say then is to let them breastfeed until they stop. Once they stop and they let go, then I would recommend, you know, burping them. Um, I would lift them up and burp them and see if they wake up. See if they're, if they really are finished eating or if they're just, you know, they're just kind of taking a little nap in between. Um, and then what I would do personally and really, you don't have to do this way. You could just go straight to the other side. I will put them back to that breast. Unless you feel like they were on a really long time and it's empty, um, I will put them back at that breast. It's always good for a baby to breastfeed to suck on an empty breast or what feels like an empty breast because it kind of tells the body, let's keep this milk going. So what I would do is um, once the baby lets go, burp them, offer that breast again, um, if they wake up and they are there, you can tell they're hungry. If they're happy with that breast, fine. You can let them continue on that side or you would move them to the other side. So in most cases you would probably, they probably would fall asleep. They've probably been sucking for 15, 20 minutes and they fall asleep, let go. You burp them. Um, they might start waking up and you realize they're not actually sleeping. They were just kind of like lulled to sleep a little bit. But as soon as you jostle them, they're awake and they want to finish eating. You can offer them the other side. But if they get their full feeding on one breast, then just offer the other breast at the next feeding. If you feed on both breasts, always start on the breast that you were on last because most likely the baby took less from that breast than the, than the first breast that they took. You can use um, a bracelet um, to move. In fact, Wix sometimes gives them out. There's like um, these bracelets. I think Medela makes them actually. And you put, you can put them on a wrist um, and be like, okay, this is, and it actually even has on it where you can put um, the baby fed two hours ago. You know, you can kind of like mark or you can mark when they're going to need to feed again. Now that's going to bring us into the next um, subject and that's how often the baby should eat. Should it be every one hour? Should it be every two hours? Should it be every three hours or every four? Um, so that's kind of going to move us into that, um, that subject. Uh, so you have that bracelet. It's there to remind you that the next feeding you are going to feed on that, you know, that breast. So just use that breast bracelet for that, but you don't have to have that bracelet. You can, you know, just use your own. Now they have apps on the, on the phone you can use. That all the, they have all kinds of stuff that you can use. Now, um, so about the hour thing, you know, it's 
I'm going to use this word a lot probably in this video, and that's that it's relative. Um, the same with changing sides. Some babies will just, it's relative. It really depends on the baby. Some babies prefer just one side. Some babies have no problem whatsoever. Um, and the same with time. I cannot tell you that the baby should eat every hour and a half or every two, or every two and a half, but I can tell you that the baby should not go longer than three. Um, and, but, and this might sound a little bit controversial, but when I say they shouldn't go longer than three, and then what I'm going to say next could be, could seem controversial, and that's that you shouldn't watch the clock. You shouldn't look at the clock and base your feeds on the clock. You will kind of um, learn your baby by the clock because the baby will be pretty, they will set a, a you know, time pattern and you're going to know when you look at the clock exactly when you're going to wake up and feed. You're going to know it. Within two weeks, probably not even that long, you're going to know exactly, okay, and I remember doing it. My husband worked nights and he would leave like 10 and I remember feeding and being like, okay, I'm going to be up at 12 and I'm going to be up at 1.30 and then I'm going to be up at three and then I'm going to be up at four. I remember doing that in my mind because he literally every hour and a half he was on the breast and all mine were every hour and a half. But my sisters were, um, every two. And I think she had even every three. And at that time, nurses were saying, don't wake them, let them sleep. But even four hours was okay. We, and this is where the relative thing comes in again. If it's a baby who um, is a preemie and they really need to eat, it might be a good thing to um, be more, um, what do I want to say, more aware of how often you're feeding them. But count your feeds and not how often they're feeding they, they should feed between 8 and 12 times a day. When you are looking at feeds, you don't have to worry about the clock. You don't have to say, okay, they're feeding every two or every... I mean, like I said, you will the baby will um, set a schedule, but you don't have to set it. Let the baby set the schedule. And the reason I say that is the baby might, might feed... Um, every hour and a half and then they go through either the night or, or the more you know during the day where they go longer periods and that's okay if the baby's getting enough feeds for instance let's say you go to bed at 11 the baby's up at 12 30 they're up at 3 they're up at um, 4 they're up and they're feeding every time I say they're up they're up at 4 they're up at 5 30 they're up at 6 30 and they're feeding all this time then around nine o'clock in the morning, they go to sleep till noon or one. Okay, well, count 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 30, 3 o'clock, 4 30, 5 30, 6 30. That's seven times they fed. And we're saying between eight and 12. So if they go for a four hour stretch, that's okay. So that's why we say don't worry about every one or two or three. Count feeds because every baby's different. Let your baby make their own schedule. Let the baby feed when they, the baby needs it and not when the clock tells us to. Now, again, this is where a few things come in to play. If you've had a C-section or if you've had epidural and you know, pain medications, or the baby's a preemie, the baby may sleep a lot. And in that case, you will have to be very, you will want to count your feeds. You will want to make sure that the baby is feeding um, close to 12 times a day, especially for a preemie. Um, will you want to be making sure that baby gets in their feeds? But you do not have to watch the clock. Just watch the feedings, count them. And if you find you have to wake the baby to feed, then do so. But only, like I said, if the baby is not getting enough feeds in. Um, so eight, t eight times is okay. You don't have to like stress. When should you start to worry would be if they're dropping weight um, or their diaper output is bad. So when I say they're, once they're a week old, their diaper output should be six di diapers or more. 
nothing less. If they're really like five, mm, it's kind of a little iffy there. Um, but anything like extremely less than six, it would be like, okay, increase, you need to increase the feeding because they're not getting enough. And you might need to look at latch. You might need to, you know, if a baby is, is feeding constantly and they're on the breast for a half an hour, which is another thing we're going to start talking about, um, or 45 minutes and the baby's not really gaining very well. They're not losing, but they're not gaining. Um, their diaper output isn't very good. They might have a latch problem or, um, a baby has to learn to suck, swallow, and breathe at the same time. And if they're really young, and even a 37 week compared to a 40 week is different, you know, a 38 to a 41 week, those are different. The brain development is different. So you need to, to do whatever you need to do to make sure that baby gets eight to 12 feedings and making sure that the baby goes through their six diapers. So I don't want you to, to worry about how long they're on the breast. Should they be on there for 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes? Again, it's relative. It's all dependent on your baby. Every baby is different. Now, I would tend to say, and most lactation consultants, um, breastfeeding peers, most of us will say 15, 20 minutes, anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes is a pretty good idea that it's a good feed. But if a baby isn't gaining, you see where the problem could be? It, you could be nursing for 15, 30 minutes and the baby's not gaining anything or and the baby's not and it could be the baby's not latched correctly so for me to say oh as long as you're breastfeeding in 15 30 minutes you're fine that that really wouldn't be the case so how often you should breastfeed should you switch sides and how long the baby should be on the breast should all be based on your baby it should be based on okay statistically we know 8 to 12 feeds the baby needs so you just have to look at that and look at diapers. That's your best, best tool. I'm telling you, the, the best way for you as a mom to know how much your baby's getting is through diaper output. And I'm now seeing them at 17 minutes, so I need to stop talking. Um, so pretty much, I hope that answers that question. Um, we talked about time, how long on the breast, just very shortly, but um, it should be according to each baby and it could go from 15, 20 minutes, but then as the baby get older, it could be five minutes. So it depends on the baby. If they're on there and they're happy, they're content, they're sleeping well in between, they're going through all their six diapers. Don't worry about how long they're feeding. If they're not doing that, then get help. Just, you know, if you feel something is wrong, seek out lactation consultant. If you're on WIC, a breastfeeding peer counselor, um, a CLC, um, La, uh, La, La Leche League, you can go to them for help, searching out, you know, breastfeeding support groups, that kind of thing. And then, of course, you know, I, I'm here to help too. Um, in some cases, you can do like a Skype type thing or FaceTime where, because in that case, when you would have any issues with feeding, it's best for the person to observe you feeding your baby to see if there's any issues. Um, if everything looks good, then, you know, we can say to you, everything looks good. Everything, the baby's sucking properly. The diapers are good. You know, don't worry. But if you feel something's wrong, you need to be able to somehow get help and have that person, you know, um, be able to view a feeding. And that's why I say, you know, going, calling WIC or whoever you have. And, and that's why I'm on YouTube as well. I'm here to answer questions. And if you really need help, you know, comment send me an email. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Um, and then how often is eight to 12 times a day? We don't watch the clock anymore. We we let the baby determine it. Um, but then again, like I said, if a baby is a preemie, um, it still all falls under eight to 12 times a day and at least six diapers or more, you know, and two or three of those stool. Um, so just kind of following those rules. And if your instinct tells you something's wrong, get help ask questions. That's the best thing to say. Um, can the baby breastfeed on one breast? Yes. They do not have to feed on both at a feeding. Um, I think that bait that touches everything. So, um, any questions, please com comment below. Let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and email me with any, um, suggestions or questions, whatever it might be. So I'm sorry, this is kind of a long video, 20 minutes, but let's just say it's the the prenatal and the postnatal put together. So um, hopefully that will, people will still be able to have time to watch it. All right, guys, have a great day and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.